Hey guys, um, I'm pressing just a few minutes out of the day today. I want to make you a video. Uh, Jerry sent me uh, a real neat interactive bee population growth chart. Uh, and I just want to share with you guys. So your talk of the turnover in Kelowna and in another session, Randy talked about similar things, got me thinking. Then your videos as of late reminded me of this. I've been slowly working up a bit of a mathematical model on a hive growth to better understand uh, expectations. It's not a trivial program at this point. It does a numerical integration from the start conditions out to the end of the year, draws a neat interactive graph of hive population and progression. I took some information from this page, it's a Wikipedia page, uh, along with your concept of turnover and worked up a model. I'd be interested in hearing if the spring buildup results out of this model correlate with what you see in the spring with your your hives coming out of late March, early spring. And then he leads me to his website. My goal on this is to end up with something akin to the population graphs you were borrow borrowing from Randy at the presentations, but make it dynamic so I can look at various different start conditions and tr try to get a realistic prediction. Your thoughts on this, Jerry? This is really cool, Jerry. I spent an hour this morning just going through different scenarios um, on your graph, um, just adjusting uh, different factors. So what I, I'm going to show you guys a few scenarios I went through. Let's use March 15th as a uh, my, as my start date. That's when I put my bees out. Let's use the peak egg rate um, as uh, to represent the age of the queen. So 2000 re would represent you know a real vigorous young queen. Uh, 1000 would represent uh, an old failing queen. And then, then you have all in between. So, so this is really cool. I uh, so I started with a winter in colony of uh, nine frames coming out of winter. So roughly about twenty-seven thousand bees or so. And you'll notice uh, right off the start, she ramps up her laying, and you'll notice she she absolutely stops her laying. And the reason being is because she's laying so many eggs, and the colony can only uh, maintain so much brood at that beginning of time. Uh, so she has to stop and wait for that um, brood to hatch out. You'll notice the brood uh, rate is in a linear upward movement, which is fantastic. But she'll stop one, two, three times she'll stop her egg laying because the colony can't maintain more and she's laying. Okay. So this is a really exciting graph. You look at uh, May 6th to June 3rd, right in that time is when I take my split. So you'll see the huge population explosion right at that time. She's she's getting pretty high up. She's maximizing the amount of brood that colony can actually maintain. Right at that time is when I take my split, okay? So let's compare that to the same age queen, the same type of queen, but with a three frame uh, colony coming out of winter. So they're really limited to the amount of brood they can look after. So she's shut down one, two, three, four, five, six, at least six times there she's shut down because that colony uh, just can't maintain what she wants to lay, okay? That uh, brood line is, you know, a little more staggered on upward movement, um, but as soon as they reach the May 6th to June 3rd, you know, I can't take a split there because they're not big enough. They're right at about that time is when they're just starting to ramp up their uh, their populations by July and uh, they're right at peak uh, efficiency and they're they send themselves right into the honey flow this kind of represents the nukes that we send into winter uh, they're a little bit smaller and they work them their way through spring a lot slower but it's got a terrific queen inside and she just drives that colony into growth and that's why these uh, uh, these nukes are able to, it almost seems like these small nukes coming out of winter, they catch up to the big winter colonies. Um, we may not take a split off them, but they get into that honey flow and they're absolutely terrific. Let's take another scenario here. Let's say I have a big winter colony coming through. I had a good queen in the fall, but that queen peters out in the spring. Okay, she's not as terrific as uh, as I want her to be. She's aging, okay? Let's say she's aging. So her peak egg rate, let's say, is down at a thousand. You'll notice right off the start there, there you don't see a lot of difference between the uh, the thousand egg queen and the 
2000 egg queen. You'll see right off the start um, that brood nest is pretty much identical, except you notice that she never gets shut down because she's not laying uh, more than that colony can uh, um, maintain. So her potential is pretty much capped right there. So when that colony starts to grow, when it starts to grow past and into more potential, that queen just has no potential. So that colony just kind of falls flat and stagnant. So on May 6th and June 3rd, you'll notice right where I take my split, oh, I'm struggling to take a split at that time because there's just not enough there, not enough potential, you know? And that's what we see all the time as beekeepers. We have these big colonies coming out of winter and they just fall flat. You know, mid spring is like, how come these, these colonies aren't growing? It's because that queen just has no potential. She's used up. She needs to be replaced. Okay, and this graph just shows it perfectly. And through the spring, what I'll do is really hard to read this. It's really hard to find those old failing queens um, before it becomes obvious. And what I do coming out of spring is I do assessments and a strength assessments and I mark my big strong colonies. So this big colony with a good queen gets marked as a strong. This big colony coming in winter with a poor queen or failing queen, it's gonna get marked as strong too because they look very similar at that point of time. Later on in spring, I'll do another assessment and I'll, I'll assess their strength and I better see improvement, continual improvement in that colony. Strong is gonna be stronger going into a split well, if that strong colony all of a sudden falls flat and actually starts walking backwards, that queen is failing on you, okay? And that's it. That's the point of time you say, okay, here we go. We're going to catch this before there's a problem. That's when you requeen that hive, okay? Because that queen has no potential. It's that queen, that colony should be just ramping its production and it's like a slingshot from spring once it gets going right, right up into June into the, the, the swarmy season. That old queen just can't do that. So you replace her and, and you'll see direct response to the uh, performance of that colony if you get that old feeling, failing queen out. But you've got to find her. So that's why I do these assessments twice, maybe three times. Um, and you're just tracking the, uh, the performance of the hive through the spring. And that tells you directly the condition of the queen you have going on inside. More times than not is directly related to that queen, okay? So then let's look at a scenario where you have a poor queen um, with a small hive coming through winter. And this is a scenario where mo a lot of beekeepers, and even me, I am so guilty of this. You, you take that small colony that's just puttering along and you leave them. Okay, why are we doing this? Well, look at this graph here. That queen... That colony doesn't even have enough bees to maintain that poor laying rate. She shut, this poor queen is shut down one, two, three, four, four times through the spring. Okay, because there's just not enough bees there to maintain what she's able to lay. And the, the amount of bees in that hive is, see, between May 6th and June 3rd, I'm not even thinking about taking a split from those guys. It's terrible. Come the honey flow, these guys aren't big enough to make honey. And then they drift into winter. So we've looked after that colony all year and they've given us absolutely nothing back. So what are we doing? The thing is, looking at those small colonies right off the start, we have a hard time determining whether it's uh, a poor hive because of just population size or because of a poor queen. Because you look at the, uh, the graft here uh, in the early spring and the, those two nests look pretty close the same for egg laying rate and uh, brood. It's just the potential in the poor queen just isn't there and she can't carry that colony then further into this exponential growth into spring. So this reinforces the fact that we have to continually assess these hives uh, and give reference points in time to be able to see this hive growth and to be able to identify uh, brilliance in the queen or to identify uh, a poor, a failing queen. We've got to be able to identify these poor colonies and not 
necessarily kill them or anything, but we have to improve this, their situation. Either we give them a boost to brood and specifically give them a really good queen. So if you're going to have them drift all through summer, taking up space, you might as well get a good queen reestablished in there so at least they're going to have a good wintering nest and then they can produce you something from the following year. So anyways, this... Uh, Thanks, Jerry, uh, for providing me this interactive uh, population growth chart. Go to Jerry's webpage and just play around to see how all these little factors influence the beehive. Um, and it's a lot of fun. And it's, it'll help you understand what's going on in the colony in the spring and out throughout the, in the summer months. And it helps you understand the importance of maintaining a really good prolific queen inside your colony.